All right, guys, well, we are continuing on in our study of the book of Proverbs. And right now we're in Proverbs chapter 22, which I believe there's 29 verses here. Yeah, 22. 22, 29 verses. And uh, Proverbs is a book of wisdom, knowledge rightly applied, right? As we've been reiterating through the whole book. Um, so let's just start it out. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, it says, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. And so what this is saying is basically, listen, we're witnesses wherever we go. And so we want to be good witnesses, whether we're at the store or at home or at work. And we want a good reputation. You know, one of the things that Paul exhorted Timothy in is to have a good reputation among the brethren. And so really we want to be a light and uh, an example of what a Christian is, not of perfection, but of following the statutes, and even when messing up, repenting and getting right with the Lord. And so really what's important is uh, how are we conducting ourselves? What is our attitude like? What is our actions and our reactions? What are they? What are they? What are we doing? And so really it's all about, not about impressing people, it's not about trying to look good or be fake, but it's trying to live out our authentic Christian life on a day-to-day -day basis. Proverbs 22, verse 2 says, The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them both, right? He is our creator and our provider and our sustainer. Verse 3, A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So the prudent man foresees evil, and so we can depict what is good and what is evil by the Word of God, right? By what God says. And we can, we, can, uh, we can spot that and then avoid it if need be or confront it and pray through it. But we know the difference between good and evil. And in today's day in society, it's so muddled. Evil is called good. Good is called evil. But we want to make sure that we stick with the good, which is God's Word. And then he says, verse 4, And by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor in life. God loves humility. God loves someone who's not trying to prove their point. God loves someone who knows they're a sinner needing to depend upon the Savior completely, knowing that they know nothing, but God knows everything. That really is humility, saying, listen, we don't know anything apart from the Lord. We can't do anything apart from God. And so that is who God loves. He loves... Humility and the fear of the Lord, revering His name. Verse 5, thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. He who guards his soul will be far from them. Verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he shall not depart from it. So how should we train up our children? Well, Deuteronomy, the Shema, talking about we need to have Scripture wherever we are, in our homes, uh, from our lips, like reading it, talking it, living it. Like that is how we are to train up our children because that's the lasting impact that we can have on their life. That should be the biggest influence in their life is the way to live a godly life. Verse 7, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He who sows iniquity will reap sorrow, and the rod of his anger will fail. Again, you reap what you sow. Verse 9, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. Cast out the scoffer, and contention will leave. Yes, strive and reproach will cease. He who loves purity of heart has, and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. I love that. He who loves purity of heart. Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are those who are pure, for they shall see God. It's amazing, isn't it? Like purity of heart is so valued by the Lord. We want to make sure we're unblemished in the sense of not letting idols take over, not being consumed with false gods, not letting things in the world take us away, lure us away from the things of God. And so purity of heart, grace on his lips. Be gracious with people. Don't hold things against them. Even if they have something against you, be gracious with them. Verse 12, The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, but he who overthrows the words of the faithless. 
The lazy man says, There is a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. The mouth of an immoral woman is a deep pit. He who is abhorred by the Lord will fall there. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. That's verse 15. And so discipline. It's, 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 uh, uh, we have to discipline our children. We don't want our children parenting the parents, right? We are the parents. We're called and given that stewardship to parent uh, our children in the ways of the Lord. And so part of that is loving correction discipline where there is no discipline people don't know what to do they don't know if it's wrong if they're not told hey this is wrong there's consequences for your actions you reap what you sow right we have to let our kids know that on a consistent basis because if not they're going to grow up thinking you know evil is good and good is evil verse 16 he who opposes the poor to increase his riches and he who gives to the rich will surely come to poverty don't oppress the poor god loves the poor right real uh, religion is basically to help widows and the poor in their time of need verse 17 of chapter 22 of proverbs says incline your ear and hear the words of the wise and apply your heart to my knowledge and it is a pleasant thing if you keep them within you let them all be fixed upon your eyes, so that your trust may be in the Lord. I have instructed you today, even you. So wisdom is trusting in the Lord. Looking to Him. Leaning upon Him for everything. Trusting in the Lord, that is real wisdom, because we're looking to Him for answers. We're not trying to fabricate, uh, fabricate some answers. We're not trying to make uh, conjure some stuff up. It's from God, so we're going to go forth in it. Verse 19, so that your trust may be in the Lord. Verse 20, have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge, that I may make you know the certainty of the words of truth, that you may answer words of truth to those who send it to you? So what he's saying is like, listen, I gave you the word of truth. Now it's time to live by it. You can't say I didn't tell you the truth. And so... There's nothing anyone can hold against you. In other words, it's like this. It's like we are given the truth. Now we are responsible and called to share the truth. That is all Christians call. That is a general calling, right? And so when we tell them the truth, they might say yes or no or maybe or I'll wait or I don't care about that or I love that or I don't want to hear it or tell me more, right? But we did our diligent duty in letting them know, hey, this is what it says. This is God's heart. This is what he thinks about his kids. And we told them, right? And it's up to them what they're going to do, but you can't say we didn't tell them because that is the great commission. That is what we all are called to do mainly. And so that's a good question too. I'm going to ask a church this Sunday a convicting question that will instantly convict all of us. And I'm not trying to bring conviction, but it's a question that we all can really think about and ponder and, and wonder, Lord, am, am I doing that? Have I done that? I need your strength and boldness to do that. But the question is, when's the last time you told someone the gospel? You gave them the gospel. When's the last time that you led someone to the Lord? That's the main part of life. It's not just about us growing. But it's about us going out. Because we know the truth. It's about us going out and letting people know. Relaying that truth to others. Verse 22. Do not rob the poor because he is poor, nor oppress the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and plunder the soul of those who plunder them. Again, don't mess with the poor. Verse 24. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man do not go, lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. And so again, anger is not a right witness for the Lord. Your anger will not help people come to Christ. Your anger will destroy you and eat you up and mess up your mind and discourage you and get you way off track. And so if you're hanging out with an angry man all the time, guess what, or a woman, then you are going to start getting that attitude too. It's like reading a book and saying, this is all the stuff wrong with the book. The person can never enjoy the book. 
because they're only looking at what's wrong with it. They don't see the beauty in the parts that are actually right. And so it's like, we don't want to go around pull, tearing people apart, being angry, letting things get to us, letting life get to us, and just being just angry. Because some people that don't cry, they say, you know what, I'm not emotional. But they get angry all the time. They're emotional. It's just a different emotion, right? It's not sensitivity, it's anger. That is an emotion. And so... You're not stronger if you don't cry, but don't hang out with angry people because their attitude will rub off on you and you'll end up being a bad witness for the Lord. Um, let's see, verse 26. Do not be one of those who shakes, I'm sorry, do not be one of those who shakes hands in the pledge, one of those who is surety for debts. If you have nothing with which to pay, why should he take away your bed from under you? In other words, have integrity. Verse 28, do not remove the ancient landmark which your fathers have set. Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. And so, listen, we have the truth from old. It, we're not going to change it. We're not going to take it out. We're not going to ignore it. We're not going to pretend it like it's not there. We're going to take it, take it in, and then we're going to walk it out. We're going to soak it in and we're going to live it out. And that's what we get to do with the Word of God. It's such a blessing, you guys. It's such a privilege and there's so much wisdom in the Proverbs. So that was Proverbs chapter 22. God bless and we'll talk to you next time.